Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. I have a super fun sew and sell project for you today. I've taken the ordinary kitchen towel and turned it into the magic hanging kitchen towel. Enough talking already, let's get busy sewing and sewing. You'll need to get yourself a couple of dish towels. These ones I picked up at my local Dollar General for $3 snip them apart. We're going to just work on one of the two of these towels for right now. Depending on the brand towel that you end up buying, if it's higher end or not high end, you may have to stretch it out a bit. Like this one is a little cheaper feeling to me. So I need to stretch it out so I get the most even cut because we are going to make two magic hanging towels from one towel. Once it has been stretched out nice and it's even, and it's not wonky at all, take the long end of the towel and then fold it together to find the middle. So the middle is right here. I'm gonna flip that back and I'm gonna simply just pop a pin there. So that tells me that that's the middle. Once you have it set, go ahead and just cut right down the middle. I don't like these little tags here, so if you could pull it out, go ahead and pull it out or just snip it off. Now you're going to put one of these aside for a second. Typically, there is a front and back to a towel. You can find that out simply by looking at which way they put the hem on the edge of the towel. These clips right here are really helpful. So if you have those, grab those for this project too. There was already some pre-made folds within this towel. Stay true to those folds. You don't need to mess with those. All you're going to do is lift it up like this and you can see already that it's coming up to a point because there are folds in that towel already and we're just gonna go with that you're going to make your pleats as you can see here i'm just continuing to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze that's what it looks like bust down here if you want and then we're going to just flop those over like so you may need to come in a little bit more I like mine to flare out just because I do. So I tend to make mine with more of a flare. Turn it this way so you can see. The pleats are totally up to you. It's however you like to see them. If I like mine like that with it flared out, you might like it coming in like this and more straight like that. So there is no flare. It's up to you. This is what the back looks like, and they should be even. Fuss with it a little bit if it's not even. The goal here is to get this top fanned out or pleated enough so that it's about six inches. Mine is almost six inches, so I'm going to spread it out a little bit more. So my width at the top here is about six inches, and that's what you need too. If I flip this over, you can see here that this is relatively straight, and if it's not, lift these up to match one another so that all edges are flush. Once you have them all flush together, you are then going to pop about three clips, I find works the best. So once you have your six inches flush across in width and you have your top clip, you are then going to put a stay stitch in the top of these pleats. All you're trying to do here is to make sure that these layers are together in the pleat in the way that you want to see the pleats on your end result project. That is not going to come apart. That is stay stitched on. I just stitched at the very top, but you need to make sure that you get all the layers in there. Otherwise, some might peek out and be wonky and better to do it right the first time. Now cut a piece of coordinating fabric to go with the hanging towel at approximately six and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. For these magic hanging kitchen towels, we're not gonna make our own hook. Nope, we're gonna buy them. <laughs> you can use ribbon. Any ribbon that will go through the wash and stand up is great. I love this thicker twill tape and you can buy it in almost any color that you like. I have some in natural and that's what I'm gonna use for this. It's all cotton. It'll go through the wash and the dryer perfectly. You need to make your hanging part of this towel the same width as this, but add about a half an inch to it. We are going to make this seven inches. Fold this piece in half. 
the long ways. So it's long this way. You're going to fold it in half, put a crease in it. Lay your twill tape or ribbon right next to that crease on either side, it doesn't matter. Lift the edge that's cut to be flush with the edge of your fabric and then pop a pin in it. You're going to do the same thing over here. Lift it up right next to that crease and make sure that it is flush with the edge of this fabric. Now we're gonna put a stay stitch right there on both sides because we don't want this to move. About an eighth of an inch or so, you don't have to do a real big one on here, just enough so that it attaches. There, that's nice and stay stitched. Take this piece of fabric and make sure that it's open long ways like that. Then you're going to lift this over here, lift that up, to meet this edge. So these two edges are going to be together. You can see there, they're flush with each other. Pop a couple pins in here just to keep this. We need to keep that right on the edge because that towel has stretch in it and we don't want it to stretch because we've already made our measurements and our cuts, right? So we wanna keep it just the way it is. Now what you're going to do is just roll this up like this. Just keep it how it is. It's okay if it falls outside of the parameter of where this fabric ends. Just roll that up. Now, I'm gonna turn this so you can see it this way. <laughs> I'm now going to lift this piece right here up to meet these pieces. I'm going to match them up really good, pinch them together, and then re-put my pin back in so that everything is nice and snug together. And I want to make sure still that all this matches up. This is very important. Make sure that this piece right here is tucked away from this seam. The thing you have to make sure of here is that this towel is away from this seam area right in here. So when I lay that down, I'm going to pop a pin right here. And if I feel there, I know that in that quarter inch seam allowance that that towel is not there. Same thing over here. Now, if you need to make your seam allowances bigger, like a half an inch, just make this a half an inch wider if you feel more comfortable with larger seam allowances. I'm a quilter, so I typically always go quarter inch. <laughs> Take it to the sewing machine now and just about, mm, I'd say an inch and a half or so, sew up that seam a quarter inch, making sure that that towel is not in there. And then pivot, come down here, and then go about an inch and a half here. When you get toward the top there, you're going to stop, pivot, and now you're gonna catch all of this stuff that we sandwiched in there together. Take your time and go slow. Some machines may not want to take that all through, but just do your best. The slower you go, the better that will feed through your machine. If you go real fast, you might get some skip stitches or something. You don't want that. But I have this Juki now and it goes through everything. So yeah, so definitely check out my affiliate link for Juki Junkies in my description box because this machine is amazing. Once you know you're clear from where that towel is right there on the edge, you're gonna pivot and you can see my towel is pushed back there. So I know I'm clear. Pop that pin out. Before we pull this out though, now what we're gonna do is push this bulk toward this area right here. Put your hands in there and just push it all that way. You can see there where our handle is and where the other side is. Remember that memory crease that we made? It kind of looks backwards now because it is. Find that and make a brand new crease going this way with your fingers. Pin that, come to this side, pop a pin. Now what we're going to do is sew about an inch and a half down here and an inch and a half down there. Once you've sewed up that side with the strap, about an inch and a half, 
and this side right here and across the top. Now it's time to pull this right side out. And this, my friends, is where the magic happens. Make sure you pull out every single little edge, even where that strap is. Get your iron hot. You can see there, that's our little space that we left open on both sides. All you're going to do is line those up and tuck them in nicely and give it a hot press. Turn that around and then do it on the other side as well. Hot press. The next step is to put a top stitch all around this area right here on every side. Being sure not to sew this though. We don't want to attach that back down. All you're gonna do here, no matter which side that this ended up is, flip it over like so toward the front. Slip it in so that the loop though is behind the area because we want to drop our needle right here, back stitch, go down and then all around. Lift up, pivot. When you go across though, you're going to be going across a bunch of those layers again, so just be mindful and careful. You might need to go a little bit slower depending on your machine. My machine, my Juki, it barrels right through this. <laughs> when you get to that corner, pivot. Since I don't have an oven door handle handy in my sewing room, I'm gonna show you on my broomstick. No jokes about me having a broomstick now. <laughs> this is going to be over the handle. Lift this up toward the back. Take the bulk of the towel. Open that loop up. Shove that in. And this, my friends, is the magic hanging dish towel. Look around you right now on the screen. I have a ton of sew and sell videos. Check them out. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.